As if moms today didn't already have enough on their plates, there's the pounding pressure of social media critics and well-meaning but judgmental friends and family members. So we're asking, is it time to rewrite the rules on modern motherhood? Though back at the time, I never thought I'd see a face. Ain't a woman alive that could take my mama's place. Tupac Shakur's song about his mother, Afini Shakur, who recently passed away, is a classic tribute to a mother's unconditional love. But new mom, Coco Austin, has a different approach with her baby, Chanel. Stroller twerking to Young Thug's hit song, Best Friend, during a photo shoot. <laughs> Coco is just one of a long list of celebrities whose babies become media stars while they're still in diapers. I asked Dr. Megan Fleming about this trend. She believes it's an individual choice. Because we also have celebrities who don't want to have any exposure for their children because they understand the value of that they're not making a conscious choice to be in that spotlight. We have to bring down the perfect moms. Are those store-bought donut holes, baby? Um, I am going to destroy it. I say that clip from the new film Bad Moms right pokes fun at the reality of female competition. But it was no joke for fitness model Chantel Duncan. She took heat for these Instagram selfies with her newborn. To me, it feels like it's more about the mother's need than about protecting their child. Everything I've ever felt about being a mom but couldn't say. There are so many rules now. Don't punish your kids. Don't say no to your kids. Supermodel Chrissy Teigen was the target of mom shaming tweets for going out with her husband John Legend less than two weeks after giving birth, and she fired back. Dr. Fleming says she did nothing wrong. Connecting with your partner, getting time to relax, ultimately then when you connect with your baby, you honestly have more to give. Those are some approaches to motherhood. Now let's find out what our panel has to say. Joining me is Laura Garces. She's a mother of two boys, uh, two teenagers. She's facing a family challenge we're going to hear about a little bit later in the show. Laura, thanks so much for being Thank with us. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. Also with us, my good friend, our Hot 97 music director, TV and radio personality, and on top of all that, a mom, the one and only T.T. Torres. T.T. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Also with us is Dr. David Manning. Pastor Manning is a pastor of the Atla Missionary church in Harlem and he's got some very specific views about modern motherhood. TT, I want to start with you on this. Okay. How do you rate modern moms according to like our mother's standards or previous generations? Well see I was raised in a very challenging household and my mother wasn't the best mom so I didn't have the tools and fundamentals when it came to parenting a child myself so I was kind of self-taught I had a lot of um, mentors who were moms that kind of you know lent a hand and helping me and guiding me um, and things of that nature so I didn't really come from that nourishing traditional um, household so I really couldn't tell you what that environment is like. All I can, you know, tell you is what I experienced growing up. And we want to hear about that in, in just a moment. Pastor Manning, in terms of when you look around, you're, the, you're right there in Harlem, right on, right. on Lenox Avenue, right. 120s. When you look around at moms, especially the young moms, the current generation right. that's out there in the community, not just Harlem, but, you know, in our society, right. what do you see going on? Well, you know, I was raised in a very traditional, nurturing environment of mothers. In fact, I was raised in an environment where any woman could be your mother uh, if she was in the neighborhood or in the block. What I see today is, is quite a tragedy. I think that mothers today have lost their way, and, and not necessarily to blame them, but the generation that preceded them also had lost their way, such as what we just heard a moment ago. Uh, it is a tragedy that young children are being raised by people who don't know what motherhood is who don't understand clearly how to nurture, how to love, and how to feed a child the way that I was fed spiritually and morally. I, I think it's a tragedy what's happening today. Laura Gar says you're a mother of two teenage boys. What does motherhood mean to you? Um, it's everything. I mean, I'm, without my boys, I don't know what I would do. I can't even picture my life without my boys. Um, and, you know, you just, like TT, we had our sets of issues growing up as well. But when I became a mother, it just kind of came natural, you know, and there are some mothers that despite not having uh, a role model to show them how to be a mother, it kind of comes natural. 
you know, and like the pastor said, there are some tragedies and some women lose their ways, but I think um, some some women just, it just comes to them. What about, do you think as a society we're lacking positive role models of women as mothers? Because a lot of our most popular images of women right now are from reality TV shows. Oh, absolutely. And I think the other thing is that it's being fostered in television and media uh, to disenfranchise the mothers from their nurturing role and to make them more of a sort of media person and our children are being raised with the idea that they can have their own minds, they can have their own worlds and raise each other. It is really quite tragic to use that word a third time, what's happening today. Now, of course, there are some mothers who are doing great jobs, and my wife was a great mother, my mother was a great mother, but overall, These generally... These moms are doing a great job right here. The ones I that are here with us. Well, 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 you know, I, I kind of feel a little... Uh, go, uh, go ahead, uh, just jump right in, like, please. Uh, you know, when you keep saying this generation of moms is a tragedy, um, I, I happen to... Be, there's a huge difference between you and I in terms of get age, and I am this generation. I, that, anyway. I am this generation's I, mom, um, and so I take offense to that because, you know, I spend a lot. You know, I spend a lot of time with my son and nurturing him and loving him and teaching him things through experience sometimes well, that's your best learning that's your best learning tool and let me finish and I might say these things about my mother but let me tell you one thing that my mom did keep foot and rooted in our household it's faith I, and the I belief of I, God I don't mean to and and cover. so with that is also something that's the foundation and the rock of my family is spirituality I, I, I and faith in you. God. I congratulate you on being a great mother, and I don't mean to paint all mothers with the same brush. However, I think generally, I think the question Lisa, Lisa asked was a general question. Individually, you can probably find a lot of great mothers, maybe some greater than you, maybe not, but generally it is a tragedy, again, for the fourth time uh, that what's happening in our society But do you today. think it's become socially acceptable for mothers not to embrace motherhood? I, pers I personally know of friends and friends of friends who have had babies or their, their wives or girlfriends have had babies and they just don't want any connection with the child whatsoever. They just go off and do their thing or move to another, another part of the I don't, country. I don't some think women, they know how to. I think some women are also trying to keep up um, with social, you know, at, and Standards. at the same time, like balance motherhood and social, but you have to put your child first. You know, and there are some women that just got lost or do whatever they need to do to well, provide. You, what do you think about well, that? Well, you also well, you also have to put in perspective too that a lot of moms now have to take on more responsibilities yes. because the men right. aren't stepping up to the plate and doing the things they need to do yeah, as true. men. That, as men, true. excuse me. So you got to look at it. The mother is now the working mom who has to provide and you know make sure the rent and the bills are getting paid and then she has to come home and she has to nurture. Let's take a little break right there. We need to take a break in the show. When we come back, we're going to ask our guests, what do they think about some of the celebrity trends in motherhood and are they being played out at home? That's what we're going to find out when we come back. You're watching Street Soldiers. Let me be clear. I wanted to leave the house three days after giving birth and I had a tummy tuck and I was ready to dip out the house. Let's talk about these celebrity moms for a moment. We just saw supermodel Christy Teigen, the wife of John Legend. She took a lot of flack on social media for going out to dinner with her husband 10 days after giving birth to her daughter. Laura, what do you think about that? I think that they need to mind their business. <laughs> no, I think that social media tends to blow things up and you don't know what she's feeling. Maybe she needed to get out. A lot of moms go through postpartum depression and maybe she felt like she was suffocating. We don't know, we don't, we don't live with them. So maybe she decided, you know, I need a break, I need to get out, and there's nothing wrong with that. What about that, TT? I absolutely- You're social media queen. <laughs> I absolutely understand why she went out to dinner with her husband 10 days after giving birth. Let me be clear, I wanted to leave the house three days after giving birth, and I had a tummy tuck, and I was ready to dip out the house. I mean, you know, people don't understand how hard it is to give birth, number one, and number two, your life literally goes from zero to 100 real quick. Sleepless nights, um, loss of appetite, barely uh, feeling normal again. Your whole body, like for me, it took me literally maybe two years to feel normal again. Wow. So for her to go out and enjoy a dinner with her husband, 
maybe she deserved it, you know? Pastor Manning, what do you think about this? Well, let me win some points here with everyone and say I agree with the <laughs> Oh, why start the now? Why start now? <laughs> right. uh, but, you know, actually, the, the, the issue is here is that that was normal years ago for a mother to give birth to a child and go back to work, not just go out to dinner, but go out to work, go back to work a week later. So I think that there's a lot being made out of the fact that um, mm -hmm. she went out to dinner because women return to their workplace, as I just stated, right. after giving birth. So this is not really a big deal unless we're now looking at women who feel that they should stay home for a month with a child after the child, after the birth of the child. But there is a bit of that competition between stay-at-home moms versus moms who are in the workforce. Yeah. And that, you know, for example, even with my son, you know, there's a lot of stay-at-home moms in my community. But again, they can afford to stay at home and their husbands are the head of the household and providing for their family. And that's, in my opinion, a luxury if you're able to do that. It should be the woman's choice, you think, or the family's choice. It should be, absolutely be the woman's choice or the family's well, choice. Unfortunately, in a lot of those households where I come from, women are the heads of households and they give birth to children with no husband and no man in the house, which I think, again, is an awful thing that's happening with the understanding of motherhood. I think the motherhood, what we ought to be talking about as well today, is that women believe they can be mothers without fathers, without having husbands, that they can bring a child into the world without having a father to help nurture that child as well. And I think that's awful that women believe that. There is no real uh, mandate in society today. Make sure you got a husband that you're married before you get married. Yeah, but why are you putting, so we're talking about two things though, just to be clear, because mm -hmm. there, are, there are women who say, I'm gonna have a baby no matter what, I don't care whether or not I'm in a relationship with a man, or the man that's is absolutely wrong. about the life. But then there's also women who do give birth, and they're in a relationship with that man and they believe that that man is going to do the right thing and be there for them and, and their child he and he's not right. so why should we blame those moms when they're well, the ones that are well maybe we need to go back it. to the condition uh, back back to the tradition that I was raised in because men made commitments and they married women and they were fathers to their children so who's but, fault but this is is it not the how were we successful during that period and then translate that to Society, what's happening so now society, no disrespect pastor but that was so many years ago. I mean, society has changed drastically since you were born. Well, 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 yeah, it has. Uh, now, I, now here, here, here's what I... We need to change it. Back. We but, need to dial it back to what it was previously. It's all I'm saying. Maybe I'm not communicating it, but we need to dial it back to a time where children are treated to the, uh, the having a father and a mother in well, the household. Well, here's, well, what, here's what I agree with you on. They deserve it. A, a child deserves a, yes, a father. Yes, and yes, and, and, and I agree with you on that point. In Absolutely. A, a, a child should have a father in his life life especially a little boy because at a certain when they become girls a certain too. age oh yes girls absolutely too girls too um because a man is their father is supposed to be the first person to show them love and intimacy that comes from a okay. father but right listen, but but i think there about... is i think there is a, a time when a boy does grow up and he needs that man to show him how to be a man and i don't think um, a mom can teach him that. All right, we're going to take a short break. This is Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We'll be back right after this. And Laura, I want to talk a little bit about your story because I think when I heard it, when our executive producer, Tone Capone, told me about what you and your family are going through, it really exemplified to me what motherhood, one of those core values of unconditional love that we think of, you know, with motherhood is one of the highest and, and most, most beautiful attributes. Tell us what you're going through with your 13-year-old your son, Donnie. Um, my 13-year-old Donovan, Donnie, um, who was hit by a car coming home from school January 12th, um, he wasn't expected to survive. And um, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I it's okay. up. no, take your time. It's, it's, it, we appreciate you being here with us and and talking about it and people you know we want to give you the full support for the fight that you're you're making for him on his behalf you can't okay we'll come back to it okay but I'm Laura Laura I'm sorry we'll just take a moment but I'm gonna tell a little bit of the story so Donnie is literally fighting for his life okay. in a hospital right now okay. Laura is at his side with her husband and other family members every single day 
there trying trying to fight and to let him know that she is there for him. And we wanted to have her on this show to show that kind of value of unconditional love. And Titi, when you hear, I mean, talk about a young mom that's really, really yeah. going all the way. Yeah. It hits you to your core because there's nothing on this earth that means more, I mean, to me than my son, the love of my son. And I always say this, I, I never want to outlive my son. I never want to. I don't even know Fathom can remotely feel the pain that she's going through. Pastor Manning, what what, what can you say to Laura? Because I'm sure you've been you've ministered to people. Yeah, Parents I, have been I, in this I situation see this all too often. And I applaud Laura for her standing by her child. She has no option, quite frankly. But there are mothers who do take an option and do not stand by their children as she is doing. And I just applaud her and want her to know also that I will pray for you. Moms using babies as props on social media. It's like they get the clothes, they get the body, they get the man, they get the little bit of fame or whatever, and then they have a baby like a baby that is. That woman has no idea trend. what she's doing. She has no idea about the sanctity of human life. She has no idea how precious what? a child's life is, and she would never expose her child that way if she understood. 15 years from now, that child may not want to see herself on social media. Some pervert can pick it up and do all kinds of things with it. That woman has no idea about the sanctity of life. So the beauty life. contestant, uh, the, the beauty contestant who was in a bikini holding her little baby at arm's length like that, that's kind of a no-no in your book. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. I think it's abuse of children to use them in that way. Children should be used, should not be used to advance careers. They should not be used to advance okay, people's let, let, own and, profile. And let's, let's should that. not be used because there's that. a huge trend a huge trend and starting with even young children because we get pitched them TD you must get pitched them all day every day with parents trying to relive or live out their fantasies of being a rapper a model an actor a singer yeah. some kind of celebrity right. through their child so at the age of four or five they have the kids out performing they have the kids in beauty contests they have the kids in all of these kinds of things well, what do you think what do you guys think about from. that if they're if they're doing it out of love like you know they want to see their child progress or whatever and that's their outlet that's different but like you said there are some mothers that do it for the wrong reason there's yeah. fathers too that push the kids yeah oh, like but, but you know i i agree with pushing your child if that is their passion i don't believe in forcing your child to do things that you would have wanted for yourself but like for my son my son i have him in everything music soccer taekwondo like and education is big in my household. I want him to be well-rounded. But to introduce but them to all these things to see things what they like. I think these things mentioned are acceptable things. I think what Lisa is talking about is that things that we would consider that are on the border or pushing the envelope. The daddy pictures? Acceptable. <laughs> yeah, those but kind of pictures. And then, and then also little boys. We've seen, li we've seen little boys, you know, like four, four or five years old. Dad puts a big chain on him, some sunglasses, turns a baseball hat around backwards. Right. I mean, and I, then, I, and then honest, he's doing I have a picture like that for of Donovan when he was like three or four. He put on his, his uh, big brother's hat and, and Tim's and a chain right, or but whatever. did you take Donovan out and push him to have a, no, a music no, career no. and make YouTube videos no. and put him out there like that and go up to radio talk show hosts no. and other people and say, no. put him on? No, I think if it's not his something that he's into and you're forcing it on your child, that That's is dead it. wrong. Yeah. But for my for my nephew, like he's been, he loves football. He's been playing his thing since he was five years old. He That his passion that's what he wants to do it is my job as his parent or as his guardian because I can't take nothing away from my sister she's an amazing person to him it's my job to steer him in the right direction and to teach him if this is what you want this is what you gotta do we're out of time unfortunately but I want to thank all of you for uh, for being with us Laura Garces thank our you. thoughts and prayers to you yes, and your family absolutely. and to Donnie thank you. for, for you. full and for complete sharing. recovery I have faith that he will yeah we do too and we appreciate you taking time thank to come you. here and share your story it's so inspirational and I, and I think for a lot of people listening and watching, it just puts everything in perspective. And T.T. Torres, thank you so much thank for being for with us. Thank you for having me. We really appreciate it. And Dr. David Manning, Pastor Manning, thank you so much for being with us. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace.